great. <clears throat> I knew that was going to happen. I've been clogged up all morning. Excuse me. <laughs> Just let me have a time out. <clears throat> <laughs> Is that how we warm up for the choir? Mame me mo mu, mame me mo mu. There we go. <clears throat> Grace and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Someone said that a good sermon helps people in different ways. Some rise from it greatly strengthened. Others awaken from it, refreshed. <laughs> I'm going to watch you. I need to, I need to see the whites of your eyes for the next 15 minutes. <clears throat> if you've ever been caught sleeping during a sermon, or at a workplace or at school, there are five things that you might want to remember to explain your embarrassment and to throw your boss, your teacher, your fellow worshiper, or Pastor Brady off the track for just a while. <clears throat> Number five, <clears throat> here's something to remember. Excuse me. <clears throat> They told me at the blood bank that this might happen. <laughs> this is just the 15 minute power nap you raved about at your time management course. I guess I left the top off of the white out. You got here just in time. Did you ever notice the sound coming out of the keyboards when you put your ears down close? <laughs> but folks, take it from me. The best thing to always say if you get caught sleeping, just raise your head very slowly and say, in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Okay, I'm watching. <laughs> Start the clock. Do you know how many psalms there are in the Bible? Oh, deafening. How many psalms are there? A lot. Where did you find that? Anyone? Okay, a lot of psalms. There are 150 of them. 150. Six are particularly inspiring to me and are my favorites. The 23rd, <clears throat> the 46th, the 51st, the 91st, the 121st, and the 139th. Are any of those your favorite? Any of them? Some of them? One of them? Two of them? I'll repeat it again. 23rd, 46th, 51st, 91st, 121st, and 139th. Today, my, the scripture that I've chosen as a background for my sermon comes from Psalm 46. In Protestant church tradition, Psalm 46 is often called Martin Luther's psalm. Not because he wrote it, but because he fashioned his hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, from the 46th Psalm. The wisdom that he was inspired by caused him to write one of the great hymns of the church, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. We're going to sing this at the end of the service when I end my message. Psalm 46 appeals to all who have a sense of God 
in what is going on in life around them. Its words have been sung in all forms of song and to melodies of countless composers. The words have found their way into colloquial speech as well as the vocabulary of worship and devotion. And along with Psalm 23, Psalm 46 has a very high rating of popularity. There's a waggish claim that this psalm was written by William Shakespeare. Because in the King James Version of the Bible, the 46th word from the beginning is shake. And the 46th word from the end is spear. And so some wag decided that uh, it was written by Shakespeare. Now, I haven't checked that out to see if the, those two words are there. You can if you'd like. Do you have a King James Version still at home? Check it out and let me know what you find. I don't want to do the work. <laughs> and I didn't do the work. I want to leave something for you to do. But I think this claim only proves that Psalm 46 has been poured over by many, many people. The psalm seems to imply that from the beginning, in many ways, we are aliens <clears throat> on earth that we call home. Earth is not always hospitable. Sometimes it's violent. And moreover, the people who share the earth with us cannot always be trusted to be kind and loving. The psalmist makes the appraisal, appraisal, appraisal of, the word, of the world of nature and humanity. And together, the psalmist believed that this is a place of insecurity and loneliness. But he also concludes that during the world's chaos, there's a tremendous manifesta manifestation of the splendor of God. And in this spirit, this Psalm 46 poem begins, God is our refuge, our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Oceans roar. The earth trembles with earthquakes. Nations rage against each other. Kingdoms rise and fall. Genocides decimate populations. There are destructive winds, fires, floods, and horrific acts of terrorism. The list of calamities goes on and on. But the writer of the psalm said, in all these fearful experiences, God is with us. The Lord is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And then the psalmist makes a very abrupt, sudden transition from the image of shaking mountains and flooding waters to talk about a beautiful city spread on the edge of a very quiet flowing river. He writes, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her right early. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter, he utters his voice, 
and the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The psalmist sees God as dwelling in that city. And he says, as man strings his bow, sharpens his spear, and fashions his chariots, God breaks the bow, cuts the spear in two, and burns the chariots. Weaponry is not our strength. God is our refuge, our strength, our help. It was the prophet Isaiah who first wrote the words, everyone will come and kneel before me and vow to be loyal to me. Therefore, be still and know that I am God. The Latin edition of the Bible, which is called, uh, the version is called the Vulgate, trans, uh, translate be still and know as vacate e videte. Do I sound learned now? A little bit? I know a little Latin. Vacate et videti, which means give way and see. I think this means that sometimes we have to get out of our own way, stand back, and observe life and know our place in it. The psalmist seems to have a prescription for finding peace in the midst of tumult. Be still. Take a deep breath. Or take a chill pill. We could go any direction in our world and see hunger, fear, violence, and horrific acts of terror. We could go anywhere and see that. The psalmist probably experienced that as well. Yet he wrote from a perspective of faith that was buoyant, sustaining, and unaffected by what was going on around him. This is the kind of faith that can come to us when our senses are quieted so that the Spirit of God can move all its energy and force within us. The psalmist stepped back off the stage for a while and allowed God to fill his heart with hope to inspire his, to inspire his mind and his heart. And we're encouraged to do the same. One thing we can do for the world, our family, and neighbors as well, is to be still and know Jesus in our heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart. I want to be like Jesus in my heart. St. Paul said he gave up everything that he once thought was crucial to life. And he wrote, all I want is to know Christ, to experience the power of his resurrection, and to become like him. Give me Jesus. They didn't even know what I was going to say today, but they matched my sermon thoughts. Thank you. When all this is going on, give me Jesus. This could be our opening prayer each morning. Can we let go of our anxieties, our need to control everything 
and everybody and be still. Step aside. Bacate et videte. Give way and see. Our Lord is always with us, giving us strength and power for our daily life. Can we view life from a perspective of faith that is confident, buoyant, sustaining, and unaffected by the events of life around us? A passage in the book of Exodus, Exodus, Exodus 14 says, the battle is not yours. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. To be still is to refrain from frenetic needs to manage your, the world, your family, your friends. We all have a tendency to want to do that. We want to be in charge and control. And sometimes our family and our friends make us a little edgy because we would do it differently. To be still is to let God work in and through you. The battle is not yours. It's God's. Relax. Give way and see that God is your strength in time of trouble. St. Paul shares this advice to the, with the uh, Philippian church. <clears throat> Have a gentle attitude toward everyone. Don't worry about anything. But in all your prayers, ask God for what you need. Always asking him with a thankful heart. And God's peace, which is far beyond human understanding, will keep your hearts and minds safe in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now let's stand and sing, A mighty fortress is our God, as if we fully believe the words of Psalm 46. <clears throat> 